Michael Pliny joins me now to talk about the crash in the Russian airline industry. He's the co-founder of HM Pliny Consultants. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I've flown Aeroflot. Uh, it looks pretty good to me. The service was great. But I guess Aeroflot is not a whole picture of Russian airline industry when it comes to safety. No, uh, Aeroflot is the largest Russian carrier, but they are one of the largest nations in the world. They have a very well-developed aviation industry. They have a number of smaller regional carriers. Aeroflot's just the most well-known and the largest international carrier that flies out of Russia. So where do Russian commercial jetliners uh, rank? Uh, where do they stand when it comes to safety compared with other major countries? Well, the, the airliners themselves are modern aircraft. The, most of them have been upgraded. The older aircraft that people associated with sort of uh, before the breakup of the Soviet Union have largely been phased out. There are a number of Boeing and Airbus aircraft that are in use all across the region. But the airliners are only one part of the picture. You have to look at sort of the regulatory and safety environment, not just of the aircraft, but of all the airlines themselves. That's where we're seeing more issues. We're seeing more fatal crashes with the Russia aviation than we are sort of in the rest of the world. Uh, 2017 was the safest year in aviation history. There were no fatal crashes uh, involving commercial airliners. Unfortunately, this is the first one in 14 or 15 months, and it does fit with a pattern over the last five years of major fatal crashes happening in Russia or to Russian airlines. Uh, what do you make of this crash? Uh, this uh, model of airliner Antov N148 jet. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it a Russian-made airline? It's Ukrainian and Russian-made. The designs are fairly recent. The aircraft type went into service in 2009. It's a modern aircraft. Uh, the engines that are used in it are derivatives of some older designs, but they've passed all their certification tests. The aircraft itself, or this fleet type, the AN148, has operated without incident um, it has a fine safety record. I don't think there's anything intrinsic to the aircraft itself in a design that would lead you to speculate towards the cause of this crash. So, uh, we know, of course, we're at the very uh, initial stages of the investigation, but according to the initial findings, what can we make about uh, the causes, potentially? Well, I think the, the first thing to realize is there are a number of reports that the pilot, shortly after takeoff, declared an emergency. There are reports he requested the ability to turn around and land at the aircraft where he or at the airport where he had just taken off from that indicates the sudden onset of a problem and something that wasn't detectable to the pilot or the flight crew before takeoff usually that means a, a sudden fire uh, an engine malfunction something along those lines where they suddenly detect uh, a major problem and they're trying to deal with it as quickly as they can you also have the report that the aircraft reached an altitude of about 6,000 feet and then descended within two minutes, about 3,300 feet per minute. That is exceptionally rapid. It means that the aircraft was, in, in many cases, sort of falling out of the sky. There are also some eyewitness reports that are still unverified that say that the aircraft was on fire. That leads, obviously, to some conclusions about a, a major, major technical malfunction on board the aircraft. Michael Pliny, thank you so much for your insight. Thank you for having me.